I want to get your thoughts on game two as a whole, but are you necessarily impressed with how Miami responded to that game one loss? Well, I think you have to be to a certain extent, just based off of the fact that in, in game one, it looked like just from an overall team perspective, they just couldn't get into a rhythm consistently. You could look at the fact that Jimmy Butler in game one looked relatively passive compared to what we've seen him throughout most of their postseason run up until this point. In game one, Miami only had two free throw attempts as a team, which, Kev, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. If you're only getting two free throw attempts for the entire game, I'm not talking about a quarter, I'm talking about the entire game, that just tells me from an aggression standpoint that they were far too passive as a team. you got to be able to attack the rim. You have to make some sort of effort to get into the paint. They simply didn't do that in game one. In game two, they looked like a more aggressive team. They looked like a more confident team. And to me, just across the board, Miami looked to be in a much more better position from a competitive perspective than they did in game one. In game one, Kev, the, the stats really indicated this. Their three-point shooters like Max Struess, Duncan Robinson, Kayla Martin, they all struggled in game one. Now, in game two, they all stepped up. Max Drews got off to a relatively good start. Duncan Robinson had a better overall game in this one, spe specifically with game two than in game one. Gabe, but Gabe Vincent was really the one that really stole the show for Miami. He was their leading scorer. He dropped 23 points in this game. And then they also got good contributions from Bam Adebayo. They also got good contributions really from the role players that failed to step up in game one. And to me, that was one of the biggest differences in this game specifically compared to game one. And on top of that, they made an effort to get to the free throw line. Kevin, okay, I don't remember specifically the amount of free throws that they uh, attempted. I believe it was 20. I believe they made 18 out of 20 in this game. If I remember the stat correctly. Yes. Okay. So you multiplied your free throw attempts by a magnitude of 10. That by itself at least tells me that that was an adjustment that Eric Spolstra and the coaching staff made, and I think the players even knew going into this game too, and it worked out tremendously for them. And to me, to kind of dive into the second half of this game, really this was sort of a very evenly matched game. Denver got off to a relatively good start uh, in the first half. They got a pretty sizable lead in the first half, but Miami was able to chip away at it. But that fourth quarter, in my mind, is really where Miami took control of this game. Duncan Robinson got off to a very hot start at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Jimmy Butler was able to knock down some crucial shots, I'd say about halfway through that fourth quarter. And then Denver came with this huge push, really, I'd say within the last two minutes of the game. And Bam was able to get some crucial free throws to get it back to a five-point game. Granted, Denver was able to get it back to a three-point game. And then on the ensuing possession, Miami had a chance to extend their lead they failed to do that and they played just good enough defense against Jamal to be able to at least contest that three-point shot to tie the game to send it into overtime Jamal misses the shot and Miami is going back home for game three with a series tied 1-1 so to me it's a huge win for Miami and Kev this is something that I think that Miami has been able to achieve pretty much throughout the entire playoff run that they've had when they've been on the road in every single playoff matchup that they've had, the first two games that they've had have always been on the road because that's what you get when you're the eight seed. They've always been able to steal one. And they did it here again. And as far as I see it, that was their objective going into the first two games in Denver. They have accomplished that goal. They have now swung home court back in their advantage. And with games three and four back in Miami, they have a chance to potentially go up 3-1 in the series. Now, granted, I do think that Denver's still going to be a competitive team, and they have a very good chance to steal one in Miami as well. But just from a Miami perspective, they did exactly what they needed to do. Overall, I thought this was just a better cohesive unit effort from what we saw in Game 1. In Game 1, they could not hit a three-point shot to save their life, did not attack the paint, or the rim in really any sizable fashion. They completely flipped the script in this one. All the role players really stepped up. Jimmy had a good game. Bam had a good game as well. 
especially with those late game free throws. And they played good enough defense to be able to win this game when it mattered the most by just contesting that Jamal Murray three when it mattered the most. But I will say the one adjustment that they're probably going to have to make is not allowing Jokic to pop off. Jokic dropped over 40 points in this game. So I think going into game three, Spolster is going to try to slow him down in any sort of capacity just because I mean, Jokic drops 40 points, 41 points. You got to play somewhat better defense against him. Granted, Jokic is probably the best player in the NBA right now. That, that goes without saying. And it's very difficult to be able to maintain something like that to under 30 points as it is. But nonetheless, I think Miami can hold their head high knowing that this series is going back to Miami 1-1 apiece. And really, this finals is in their hands with home court for the next two games. I'll just leave it at that. The game went better than expected. I know that I picked Miami to win. And I know that Denver made a game of it later in the, in, in that fourth quarter. But this is why I will die on this hill and say that hard work will always beat talent. And I'm not saying that Denver doesn't work hard. But for those that said that this was going to be a sweep, for those that said Miami had no chance, granted, Denver can end up going down and winning the next three in a row. But both of these games have been competitive. The Miami Heat may not have a two-time MVP, one of the best point guards in the conference, you know, a, a very, a very skilled and deep, uh, excuse me, a very skilled and deep team like the Denver Nuggets do, but they have the heart for it. They have the vocal leader in Jimmy Butler. They have the Hall of Fame head coach in Eric Spolstra, or should I say future Hall of Fame. And that does a lot. They made the adjustments that Kyle and I both said they needed to make. They started Kevin Love. They went bigger to start the game, so those early runs with Aaron Gordon did not happen. And Miami jumped out to a quick start with Max Struess getting 12 points in the first quarter. Huge difference from zero. Massive difference. You know, Denver then goes on a run. Shout out to my boy, AJ Morales. He was on this podcast a couple years ago. And, you know, obviously, you know, constantly in, in my messages, talking to me about things we can improve and discuss and what me and Kyle uh, should do or have done. So again, shout out to AJ because he said this since the day I met him. Basketball is a game of runs. And that was the definition of this game. Because like I said, Miami came out and was firing on all cylinders. Denver responded. Then Miami goes on another small run. Then Denver blows it open by double digits. Miami claws into it within seven or eight points to go into half. Denver takes the lead. Miami crawls back. Miami goes on like a 15 to whatever run in the fourth quarter. Denver goes on an 11 to two run to close out the fourth quarter before it ends. And Miami holds on. I mean, when you look at the box score, like quarter to quarter, outside of the second quarter and the fourth, because Miami had that big explosion in the fourth quarter with Duncan Robinson going off for an 8-0 run on his own, it was 26 to 23 in favor of Miami at the end of one. It was 25 to 34 in favor of Denver in the second quarter, 24 to 26 in favor of Denver, and then 36 to 25 in favor of Miami. It really was back and forth all game long, and that's what you want in an NBA Finals. And that is in huge part to Jimmy Butler being more aggressive. Jimmy Butler may have taken some ill-timed shots, made some shots a little bit more difficult than they needed to be, you know, fading away, taking a contested jump shot, you know, rather than taking the floater. But when you look at what everybody was able to contribute, this is what you need for Miami because this is how they've been winning games. Like Kyle said, this is how they've been able to steal one game from the home team. You got 21 from Jimmy, 21 from Bam, 23 from Gabe, 14 from Struz, 10 from freaking Duncan Robinson. Kyle Larry had nine. But those nine points were critical because I think he went to the free throw line in the fourth quarter after being fouled on a three by KCP. And then he was able to also knock down another three in that quarter as well. So when you really think about it, they may have been nine points, but those nine points were very, very timely points. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying the Miami Heat did everything we needed them to do. Adjusted from the three-point line, adjusted from the lineup, and dis dispersing the minutes at the power forward and center position because you have to have bodies rotating um, outside to make sure that Bam doesn't get into foul trouble when guarding Nikola Jokic. But at the same time, the Denver Nuggets bench played exceptionally well because I believe they went on a 25-6 to run without Nikola Jokic on the floor with their bench players. And at 
that point, it looked like Miami was going to get routed in the second quarter, to which, again, that's why Denver won that quarter 34-25. to But Miami closed out that quarter and made it a single point lead. You know, they cut it down from like, I don't know, I think it was, Kyle, I think it got up to like 13, 14 points, maybe even higher. And they cut it down to like seven or eight. I think at halftime, it was a six point deficit for Miami. So they really kind of cut into that lead. uh, But that's why, that's why I always say they're so well coached. People always talk about, oh, you guys are just repeating what you hear on SportsCenter or you guys are just reading what the, what people are talking about on Twitter. We're all saying the same thing because it's not hard to see. You have a great coach, you have good players, and you have one person that's kind of sparking everybody to be better. That's why Jimmy Butler is who he is and why he's so well-respected. I don't need to have a PhD in sports analysis to understand that Spo has these guys ready to go, and if people aren't performing, next man up off the bench. Dude, they played 10 players today. That's pretty deep, if you ask me. And Spo has everybody on a tight schedule, on a tight ship, ready to go when needed. Jersey number called upon when needed. Ty Smith had 18 minutes last game. He only played six, but they didn't need him this game. Then you go out and you give Duncan Robinson good minutes. Obviously, Cody Zeller gave eight minutes. Kevin Love, thankfully, was able to come out and play 22 minutes. He didn't play a single minute the last game. So adjustments were made. The Heat come out on top. They shot effectively from the field. Yes, Nikola Jokic dropped 41 points, but he was not able to capitalize on that triple-double. He was not able to get other players as involved. And those role players for Denver did not perform very well either. 12 for Aaron Gordon, 5 for Michael Porter Jr., 6 for KCP. Jamal Murray didn't have the worst game in the world, but he didn't have the usual Jamal Murray game. He only had 18 points. And then, you know, Jeff Green had 9. Bruce Brown had 11 You know, Chris Braun had six, and he went on a small run of his own, I believe, somewhere in the third quarter to where he was actually exploding, making plays, chasing chasing down loose balls. So I expect this series to continue to be this competitive. It's headed back to Miami, and I'm looking forward to it. 